The good, the bad, the rumors, and even more stunning, the truth. Marilyn Manson's rise to celebrity status reads like a fairy tale gone awry, a rags to riches story, with incidences of sexual and mental abuse thrown in along the way. And when it's all said and done, the Reverend Manson denies nothing and blames no one. He just wants to be hated for all the right reasons. I think that Brian Warner, when he brought Marilyn Manson to the scene, did a very positive thing. And I think he's continued to do a positive thing. I just think he's being totally misread. You know, he's making us think. That's what we need. That's what rock and roll's supposed to be. And that's what he is. He's rock and roll today. For everything that Marilyn Manson is, he worked hard to get there. He was the only person in a band in this town at 3 o'clock in the morning at Kinko's Copy Center hand-drawing his own flyers. A lot of the labels I was dealing with always had asked me, did you ever hear of Marilyn Manson? And, and I was pretty much like, yeah, you know, they, they asked me about the band and everything else. Nobody liked them. I mean, I must have visited every major label independent. Everyone passed on Marilyn Manson. And I don't know if it was because of their shock value or, you know, they didn't take it seriously. But now look at them. Every album, they keep getting new members and he keeps kicking out people and this and that. You know, if they piss him off, I guess he gives them the fucking boot, which is cool. But, uh, you know, he's the one. He's the image of the band. He's the one all the little kids look up to and jerk off to and slit their wrists to. You know, when that Rolling Stone magazine came out with Brian on the cover, yeah, you know, it's like I knew they were going to make it, but just to see that. Hey, son, get your picture to get your picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone. <laughs> Rolling Stone. Brian was always a perfect gentleman. I think Brian is to music what Howard Stern is to the radio. Shock, shock people, and the more you shock them, the more they're going to listen. In his own way, he's a very intelligent person very creative I think a lot of what he does is completely put on he's playing with the people which is what shock is to play with people I believe I'm in his book and he refers to me as the mafia type from Davy with the gold around his neck Brian if you see this or if you hear I make one promise to you next time I see you I'll put you over my knee and spank you because I think that's what you need hopefully they can uh, survive physically you know physically is the most important thing because your health is far more than any fame or money far more important every uh, decade a band like this comes along for their shock value I think I think they can have longevity if they change with the times like like David Bowie always did and Madonna always did you know but uh, I think they milked their original image for what it was worth I think they have to move on now um, to the next thing, bigger and better things, and I think they're going to accomplish that. I, I, I could see Brian definitely, who's, you know, the brainchild behind it all. I, I could see him doing it because he's definitely a, a shrewd guy and accomplished everything he set out to do over ten years ago. By the time this documentary has been released, Mr. Manson will have reinvented himself once again. He has now donned a more Bowie-esque identity and is quickly shedding his antichrist image towards a kinder, gentler Marilyn Manson. With a new glam look and some breasts, he is definitely becoming more Marilyn than Manson. Now I'm Manson. Deep purple. Shit. Really? I, I like, like all of it. I like the stones. I like. I'm in the big the one. Beatles. Six. Classic rock and roll. Well, you don't like Marilyn Manson? No. Why? You uh, a groupie? No, no, it's part. It's just part of the whole music scene. 